Hi, this is Chris from Big Picture Workshops, and today I'm going to uh, show you folks how I set up Final Cut Pro very basically from the very beginning. It's kind of important to to set your preferences in the beginning and to you know have your uh, media organized so that when you want to find it again, you can find it. So I'll, let me show you how I kind of set it up. I'm going to start from the very beginning and I can show you how I how I like to set it up and you know everybody can kind of set it up their own way but it's good to know what the controls mean. So first of all let me launch Final Cut here. And in the beginning you'll get this kind of this window choose setup. This isn't really that important you could set what format that you like to edit in, uh, what frame rate, and uh, or what easy setup you want to choose. You could do that in the beginning, but you could also do that once you've kind of gone past this window. One important thing is having a primary scratch disk. Right now I'm using a uh, MacBook Pro, so on this kind of a laptop it's always a good idea, actually with any kind of computer, it's always a good idea to store all your media on an external hard drive. So what I have is um, an external FireWire 800 drive, but anyway, it's always a good idea to keep all your media on an external hard drive. So this is where you tell Final Cut where you want its scratch disk location to be located. Um, so that'll mean any kind of um, any kind of footage that you capture will go to that disk. So I have my own little uh, drive out there. So it's set to that, and if you look at the contents of my drive now, there's just some folders on there, um, and I have I have an a, an older Final Cut Pro folder here that I've named. But let's just see what Final Cut makes when it when it uh, creates when it when it sets up Final Cut Pro. Okay, so we'll hit OK. Sometimes you'll get this external AV warning. You can kind of just blow past this. Just hit continue. Um, I always just Hit continue there, and you let Final Cut Pro kind of load here. Anyway, okay, so it, now it comes up with your window, and I'll just show you kind of. This is the I'm on a system with just one monitor right now, and it's it automatically gives you kind of the standard standard view of the windows. But before we go into the windows and and the description of all that, let's just go up to the Final Cut Pro menu, and let's check every. Let's check what's going on here. So we've got about Final Cut Pro. It just says, you know, the version. We've got the user preferences here. And this is kind of where I, I like to set up a couple things the way I like it. I've found some of these are pretty useful. The main one that I like to turn off is this auto render. I found it's not very helpful and it's actually pretty annoying. So I turn that off there. Um, I like the autosave vault and how it saves a copy of your project every 30 minutes. Um, I usually just leave it like that. That seems to be a pretty good number. They keep 40 copies, um, backup copies of your project, so you can go back 40 versions um, at 30 minute increments, which is pretty nice. And then it keeps a maximum of 25 projects, which is pretty cool. Um, let's go to the editing tab. I kind of leave this alone labels you can kind of set that to whatever you like I don't really use the color, color, colored labels a lot timeline options um, this I, I uncheck this just because I work in a lot of non drop frame media um, default number of tracks that means there's one video here and four audio tracks as you can see in this timeline what I like to do though in this display is set the um, the audio controls. I hate to have to turn that on every time I make a sequence, so let's just turn that on now. I'll show you what that means later. Um, all these others are kind of optional, and that's about it. You know, you can kind of look through the rest over here. I don't really don't touch anything else here, and we say OK. So basically, you have the sequence here that was already uh, placed in by default. Now, if you create a new sequence, which is Command N for a new sequence. You'll see when that opens, double click that, and it'll load here. It'll look a little bit different than this one does because it'll show the audio controls, which we asked to be turned on. So let's double click that. There you go. Now this sequence has 
audio controls. And I like that because I like to solo a track or mute a track. I like to have that control because it's very useful when you have a bunch of audio down there to isolate certain patches of audio. So that was the preferences. Now there's system settings. This is um, another kind of a interface that lets you kind of customize what Final Cut Pro does. So in the Scratch Discs tab, that was that, that first window we saw in the very beginning where it asked us where we wanted our Scratch Disc to be. I put it onto my external hard drive and you can see here the name of my the hard drive is Luminance Digital. Automatically it made a folder called Final Cut Pro Documents. So let's go back. Let me just cancel this first. Let me hide Final Cut. And let's look in here and see if that new folder was created. And sure enough, there it is. It's made a folder called Final Cut Pro Documents. And inside that, it automatically made these six folders, which you will see a lot. And you'll, you'll get used to seeing this all the time. Audio render files, auto save vault, capture scratch render, thumbnail cache, waveform cache. We could also later change that location, go back to Final Cut. If we, if we didn't like where it put it, before we start working in Final Cut, before we start filling up a bunch of these folders, we want to be able to organize that, put that where we want. So let's say we didn't like where Final Cut put that. What we could do is go back to System Settings and say, you know, I didn't like that. Let's set that to a new location. Let's go back to that hard drive and let's maybe let's create a new folder called uh, test. And then all the files, all the Final Cut files that we're working with in our test project will go in there. So we'll create it. It's called test. So there's the folder it's made. We want to make sure that it's highlighted just like, okay, so that test folder is highlighted. And we say, okay, choose. Now you see here, it'll have the name of the hard drive and the word test. And the way I, I like to keep everything all together. So I like to keep the waveform cache test choose thumbnail cache test choose and autosave test. So you can see here all these are going to the same place. We'll hit OK. Now let's check. Let's hide Command H to hide Final Cut. Let's go back to the hard drive and see if it made all the, those folders. Hit test. You can see it's only made three folders here. Audio render, capture scratch, and render files. That's okay because once we start working with Final Cut, it will make the other three folders. Uh, that's just, just kind of weird, but that's just how it works. So this one, the old one, had uh, thumbnail and waveform. Those won't be used anymore. They'll, they'll, they'll be created here and remapped to the test folder. The reason I'm going into this is in, in detail like this is because you want to have control over where Final Cut puts its files. Because once you start working with a bunch of different projects, you're going to have files all over the place. And I've seen people <laughs> who, uh, who you know, ask me for help and they'll open their project. And between the two of us, we just can't find anything. Everything is just spread out over many drives, many folders, subfolders. Sometimes people have a Final Cut Pro Documents folder, within that a Capture Scratch, and within that another Final Cut Pro Documents folder, and so on and so on. It's like Russian dolls or something. It's, it gets pretty crazy. So I just really recommend to kind of stay on top of how, to kind of understand how Final Cut, put, how, how it creates those folders. It's kind of important.